finally made it. The spotlight is all yours. You're a star. You just finished a world tour with your band. Four of your songs have just sold 20 million downloads on iTunes. And you have the top four hits on Billboard. They're all yours. You're ready to go home and enjoy the glamorous life. Everything is just wonderful. Your first stop is to your friends and family. The plane ride was long and hard. You reach customs tired and ready to crash in a familiar bay. You're stopped at the gate. The officer stamps your passport in bright red gold letters. You look. The tears stream down your face as you're turned away from your homeland. This is the story of Miriam McKeever. Miriam McKeever came from a humble background that led to an astonishing career as a singer, songwriter, actress, and international performer. Her expression of life as a political and women's rights activist and a humanitarian was articulated through her music. We'll now begin the story of her life with the infant jail term. Her mom was incarcerated while she was just 26 weeks pregnant. She spent the first six weeks of her life in jail with her mom for the selling of African she was born in Prospect Township, South Africa, on March 1, 1932. In McCabe, her autobiography, she tells the story of her youth, where she was walking home from school one day, and her friend was hit and struck by lightning. With the image of the burned body in her mind, she ran home to tell her family. She was scared by the locked door. When she came inside, she saw her sister laying on the floor, covered in blood, and a newborn baby in the midwife's arms. McKeever recants and tells, the world has lost a life and has gained a life. Almost at the same moment, I have witnessed them both. At 13, she entered a talent show. In the talent show, she won first place. And from there, she was often invited to sing at many weddings, and she was soon invited to join the Johannesburg Cuban Brothers. This became the, this became the beginning of her life as a superstar. New Encyclopedia of Africa lists the Manhattan Brothers as granting her the lead vocalist position. This propelled her singing career to full blast. The group was the very first South African group to tour the United States. It was only 1959. She started her own band the Skylarks and gained further press attention. Her American debut began with an appearance on the Steve Allen Show. Miriam earned her first Grammy for Best Folk Recording with Harry Belafonte with an evening, and an evening with Harry and Makiba in 1966. Talk of the Nation, November 2008, Remember Miriam Makiba, Mama Africa, states she joined the United States tour of King Kong famous South African musical and appeared in the documentary Come Back Africa that premiered at the Venice Film Festival. She was even in the Broadway hit play Sarafina. Miss Makiba embarked on a farewell worldwide tour that lasted three years. She's often remembered fondly reported Sing Out volume 52, issue number four, sometimes donning a cane to enter the stage. Paul Simon acknowledged her and her inclusion in the Graceland. She never succumbed to any of her injuries of arthritis or cervical cancer. She never considered herself an activist while she had her exile from 1960 through 1991. It was 31 long years. She wasn't able to return home until Nelson Mandela invited her home when he became released from his jail term in the year 1990. The Daily Variety December 2008 article reflects on her testimony that she gave at the United Nations about apartheid in her native country. As a result of her statement, they called for an international boycott of South African goods. At this time, the South African regime called for a ban on the sale of her music. Despite this fact, her popularity continued to grow. She obtained honorary citizenship in at least 10 countries. The New African Woman publication of December 2008 reports when her exile ended, in 1990, Nigel Williamson says Nelson Mandela rejoiced, as did the rest of the world. By partnering with husbands such as Carmichael Stokely, 
Stokely Carmichael, and Hugh Mascala, she was able to hold many benefit concerts. These concerts issues range from rehabilitation of child soldiers, the spread of HIV and AIDS, apartheid of wealth awareness, and equal rights for women. We've traveled through the life of Miriam Makiba, a woman of humble, humility, great talent. She lured thousands into her life with her songs and captured the hearts of millions with her story and tenacity. She came into the world at a great disadvantage, but became an international star with creativity and talent and a true music industry diva. I'm proud to bear the name Makiba. It speaks loudly without uttering a word. I hope I can live to be a portion of the woman that she was. She was dedicated to her gift, resilient and unyielding in her beliefs, and always giving back. Her eulogy was presented by Nelson Mandela, and it reports in the article from Miriam Akiba's last song from the English version of the Hindu. Nelson Mandela stated, her haunting memories gave voice to the pain of exile and dislocation which she felt for 31 long years. At the same time, her music inspired a powerful sense of hope and awe. 